Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Shadman. And I'm Corinne. And today we're really excited because we're talking about the Nikon D7500. So yesterday we went out um, to downtown Mississauga to take some photos uh, and it was a really good experience. We did some long exposure photography, some portraits. So we really kind of tested the camera in different sort of scenarios um, to see what our experience would, with it would be like. We also went for tacos. Oh right, That's yeah, weird. yeah. We, no, yeah, I don't we like did. that. Forgot about that. That was actually a big part of the night. I forgot about that. I had a beef taco, a pork taco, and a cauliflower taco. Yeah, it's yeah. the buffalo cauliflower. I had the chimichanga. <laughs> The place we went to, there's actually a really cool restaurant. It was called El Jefe in Port Credit, if you guys have never been. It's got some really cool lights when you walk into the place. Um, the decor is really interesting. Um, so for any content creators, Instagrammers, it's definitely a spot to hit up uh, if you're looking for Mexican food and you're in Mississauga and Port Credit. <laughs> From someone that recently just switched to mirrorless, I do love the feel of DSLR cameras overall. I find that I could pretty much grip this all day and not have any complaints about it. How about you, Shadman? Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it too. I'm actually coming from mirrorless camera. I use a different system that's a lot smaller than this. So um, it was interesting to kind of get back in the flow of using a larger camera, but I really enjoyed it. The grip, yeah, over the course of the day, it's really comfortable. The battery lasts all day long. Um, and um, just, it felt so solid in the hand, which is something I like, I guess I missed um, shooting a mirrorless camera for a while. Um, I do really like the uh, tilt screen. However, I would rather get a swivel screen for it, but I do like that I was able to do a couple low shots with the screen, no problem. I've been told, uh, just talking to industry professionals in general, is that um, because of the weather ceiling on the camera, there's only certain parts that they can use and certain ways they can do the screen. I know for a while Nikon actually refused to do any moving screens at all, just because they felt like that compromised the overall uh, weatherproofness of the camera, essentially. Uh, speaking about weather ceiling, we did uh, try out the camera's capabilities. Um, we did shoot inside a water fountain and that was pretty fun. We got some pretty good shots. Yeah, I agree. And that's, I think, something that I really miss about a camera like this as well. It's just having that feeling of safety where, yeah, you can go near a waterfall or you can go near, or you can be in inclement weather and you know you're going to come out okay. So I think that's, I think that's really clutch. In that water fountain, I did try to do the burst mode because I know it could do up to 50 raw, un, raw uncompressed, raw, that word. <laughs> could do up to 50 raw shots um, without a problem and I really tried to put that to its limits. Yeah, the continuous shooting is really impressive. I mean, just the mechanical shutter does eight frames per second continuous. So um, I think it's like the perfect camera for someone who's stepping up from an entry level camera. They want something faster. So anyone who's getting into sports photography, any sort of wildlife enthusiast, I think they're really, really gonna enjoy this camera. Yeah, so I just switched to mirrorless. So going back and using a DSLR, I really loved it. I love the viewfinder of the DSLRs a lot more than the mirrorless cameras. Um, I do kind of miss that with mirrorless, at least I'm able to see what my shot is going to look like before yeah, I, I took it. So there was quite a few times that I was either overexposed or underexposed. But I mean, after a couple trial and error shots, I got the hang of it. Yeah, that's something that really threw me off as well because I'm coming from a mirrorless camera, so I'm always used to having exposure preview in my viewfinder and it was challenging because I would have to look back on the screens, uh, sorry, on the camera's LCD every single time that I took a shot to see whether I'm exposed properly or not and that was very bizarre. Plus um, having, I think the autofocus experience of the camera using an optical viewfinder was a little bit odd for me as well because I, because of the higher resolution LCDs that we, electronic LCDs that we get in these mirrorless cameras now, um, it's a little bit more precise and you can tell, a, it's a little bit more obvious when you're in focus and when you're not uh, versus an optical viewfinder. We did notice that a few action shots, uh, they were either slightly off focus or even a few of our shots in general were always slightly off focus. So we don't know if it was maybe us not really not waiting enough for her to take our shots or if it just was in yeah, general I mean, the autofocus being slightly off. Right, but... I mean, I think, I think it's partly both. I mean, mm -hmm. we like, obviously we we only really had the one day with the camera, so maybe we could have deep dived a little bit more to figure out the autofocusing system and kind of its nuances. It's just, it's it, it's a little disconcerting when you, you just don't see the focus point grabbing onto a person's face now or their eye, whatever, you know. Yeah, I think we are a little bit spoiled with 
how fast the mirrorless mm -hmm. technology is moving on some of these newer cameras for sure. I love it. I can't, I can't get enough of it. I use it on my camera all the time. Um, I love having Wi-Fi because it just, when I'm traveling, it allows me to back up right away. Or if I'm doing something cool uh, during the day, I'll be able to quickly send it over to my phone. And phones now have such good editing programs that I can edit right away and put those shots up on Instagram or Facebook, whatever I want to. So I can't get enough of the Wi-Fi feature. I think every camera should have it. And I think most cameras do at this point. Uh, so if you put out a camera at this point that doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you're, you're really gonna be missing out. Because the other thing about the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi feature of these cameras is that um, you don't have to be around a Wi-Fi signal. So you can be on top of Mount Kilimanjaro and you still have the ability to connect your phone to the camera and transfer over your photos. So I think that's, that's a phenomenal feature. I don't know about you, but I've been really impressed with the image quality from this. I, I think the colors, the ability to shoot in high ISO on this, I've really, I've really been impressed. I am, um, uh, I don't know, I don't have enough good things to say, but I think 20 megapixel is just the right kind of uh, megapixel count for a camera such as this. It keeps your workflow very simple. Um, and it's that sweet spot where you still get really good high ISO performance as mm -hmm. a result, right? Um, I don't know, what's your take on it? I mean, I really wanted to see how good the high ISO performance was. So being able to really boost it up, I did still get quite a bit of grain, but it wasn't that like distortion grain, which yeah. I really liked about it. Yeah, and so that's that's exactly it. I think the colors, even in higher ISO, still stayed very accurate to what they are, mm -hmm. um, because that's the problem a lot of uh, entry-level cameras run into is that, um, yeah, you see the grain, but then you see the colors muddling as well. I think the skin tones came out really nice mm -hmm. too. Uh, I was very impressed with how uh, this camera handled the skin tone, so that was super impressive. We took pictures of each other. Yeah, we, we just Simple. took portraits. <laughs> we took portraits and I, I think, I, I don't know, I think everyone has sort of a color palette in their mind that they're looking for. Some people prefer cooler tones, some people prefer warmer tones. I think for me, portraits, I always generally prefer a little bit warmer tones. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more contrast to the image. Um, and this delivered 100%. Yep. I think it handled the gradation in the sky really beautifully as well. Um, we did a couple of hillside shots and mm -hmm. the grass, um, the green in the grass was uh, very, very nice. I find that you could still do amazing pro shots with a low megapixel camera as long as you know your settings. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I think what Nikon did so that was really smart with this camera as well is that they removed that anti-aliasing filter. Um, and that just gives you outstanding sharpness from the sensor. So um, I've actually cropped into a couple of the shots when we were out shooting um, and just looked into it with magnification. And um, it's unbelievably sharp. The detail is uh, outstanding. and. The fact that that's coming, that kind of detail is coming from a 20 megapixel image uh, blew my mind. I, I couldn't believe how good it was. We did use a, what is it, 17 to 55 2.8. So it is a little bit of a higher end, faster lens. And then we also did use the 50 millimeter because you can't go wrong with the nifty 50. If you're looking at a camera system like this, that's that's one of the biggest strengths of a system is that, so Nikon is using F mount, uh, which is their, which has been their mount for generations and mm -hmm. generations. So there's just so much variety and choice um, when you are looking for lenses for the system. You can, there's a ton of older glass you can take a look at, a lot of yeah, the so really good new glass. Yeah, so what makes this one really good is that if you yep. do have Nikon, older Nikon glass, yeah. Um, you would be able to put it onto that camera rather than there's quite a few cameras. Yeah. I think it's only the D7200 and the D7500 that allow you to do that. All the other cameras, unfortunately, you will not be able to use. Yeah, and that's what I think is a bit of a barrier for someone jumping into some of these new mirrorless uh, cameras is that, yeah, there just isn't enough lens availability yet to really make that switch. Or, uh, or if you're a new user, sometimes it can be a little bit limiting, but I mean, if you're coming to a Nikon D7500, the lenses are just endless. Mm -hmm. Because not only can you get um, DX format crop sensor lenses for this camera, which is what we use with the 17 to 55, but any full frame lens would also work on this, which is beautiful. So um, I think, what, like hundreds of lenses you can choose oh, for yeah. the system, uh, which is unbelievable. Nikon is now introducing 4K into this camera, which is, I think is a huge step. Uh, and any camera that comes out nowadays should have the ability to shoot 4K because it just allows you so much flexibility in post, whether you have to crop in uh, or add in effects or anything like that. It's, it's a huge bonus. Overall, it's a huge step for Nikon because Nikon is not 
necessarily the name that you associate right away when it comes to doing video, but we've now seen a steady progression in their capabilities and what they're putting into these cameras. Um, and I think the overall footage itself looks really good, uh, but as a tool, I, I don't think it's quite there yet. So if you are a serious videographer, um, there might be better tools out in the market for you to look at. But I think it's a good step for Nikon. And uh, as far as a DSLR goes, um, I think they're going in the right direction. Better life is insane on this. I like, mean, what the okay, heck? no, uh, it really depends. If you're a mirrorless shooter, then yeah, you're gonna think that this battery life is insane. The battery life is good, but that's also because we only have one screen versus a mirrorless. Yeah, and I'm, has I'm two not screens. gonna name names, but the mirrorless camera <laughs> that I'm coming from, I'm like, uh, one day of shooting, I'm chewing through a minimum of three batteries. Uh -huh. And we shot for an entire evening yesterday from like six o'clock to 10, like almost 11 at night. and we used up 25% battery life. That's, I that's mean, stupid. I, I that's, just can't even. That's where I think uh, DSLRs still excel is because yeah. you can actually keep a battery yeah. versus mirrorless. And that's where guys. I think the uh, like the uh, OVF, the, uh, the optical viewfinder mm -hmm. really helps out too, for sure. It just conserves so much battery mm -hmm. life. But, um, and, the, and the thing is, the, the, just the pure fact of it is, it's a bigger camera. DSLRs are just bigger cameras. So they're able to just fit a physically larger battery inside <laughs> these cameras. Uh, which just makes it go all day long. But yeah, I'm I'm just astounded uh, at how good the battery life is on this camera. I can easily <laughs> see a person going, maybe honestly like like a weekend trip without having to recharge this battery, which is crazy. Cause I'd be using like five batteries on my camera. <laughs> So I, I really think this is this is such a good all-around camera for someone who's just looking for an upgrade. Um, I think that's that's who it's for. It's for the moms and dads who are going to be shooting um, their kids playing sports or um, their recitals or whatever it be. I think it's meant for people that are wanting to step their toes into wildlife photography, birding, anything like that, because of such a good continuous shooting speed, the good autofocusing system in here, and the ruggedness of the body. Um, it's just a really, really good all-around uh, all camera. So anyone coming from an entry-level camera, I think this is gonna be a huge step up. Um, yeah, I could see this camera being the beginning of the Pro Series camera, especially if you do not um, have the budget to yeah. get more of a Pro version of this kind of camera. So it kind of still allows you with uh, quite a few of the Pro features, like yeah. the super fast, uh, shutter and processing, but um, for the price of more of a consumer yeah, I agree. camera. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think what's really cool about a camera like this is that you see a lot of the trickle down features from some of their higher up cameras, right? It's using similar, like this has the Nikon 3D tracking autofocusing system mm -hmm. that we used to only see in their higher end cameras like the D500 and D800 series cameras and things like that. So we now see that in the D7500. Um, that 20 megapixel sensor, that's also the exact same sensor that you get on the D500 which is a good thousand dollars more than this. Um, so having that low light capability in this is huge too. So um, yeah, I, I love it. I think having all those trickle down features in such a smaller price point uh, is a big deal. And I think that's, that's gonna be really good for a lot of people. Thank you guys for watching. My name's Corinne. I'm Shadman. And thank you for joining us. We really hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you want to learn more about the camera, it's available on our website, uh, along with any of the accessories that we used. Uh, and please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on our videos and follow us on our social media channels. So until next time, happy shooting, everyone.